Alrighty guys, we are officially back from the vacation. We are back today and we are uh, bringing you guys what you what I've gotten a couple of requests for. Uh, this is a little entry back into what we were uh, doing. Uh, this is kind of going back to my roots, back to where I, uh, it all started for me this year. And that is the 3-4 defense. Now, uh, a couple of requests that uh, guys have you know, messaged me and all that. And they've been wondering, what would I do with the Green Bay Packers depth chart? Uh, what would I do with their defense for a 3-4 base. 3-4 uh, base defense, and I picked the 3-4 playbook, but you can find this in other playbooks, of course. The 3-4 formation is in a variety of playbooks. You have to find the right one. For me, the 3-4 is probably the best all around, but uh, real quick, let's hop into uh, coaching options. Go down to our depth chart, and we will show you uh, the depth chart we have for the Green Bay Packers uh, defense uh, real quick, and then we're going to do this defensive scheme of the week breakdown. This is a scheme of the week um, I think this is our fourth or fifth one. So, anyway, here we have Eric Walden at the left end. You're going to want to put Ryan Pickett uh, at the right end. Uh, B.J. Raji at the nose tackle or defensive tackle. Left outside linebacker is going to be Clay Matthews, middle linebacker. Bishop and Hawk in the middle. Um, right outside linebacker, we have Nick Perry. Cornerbacks, we have Williams, Hayward, and Shields. Uh, pretty deadly trio right there. Uh, and the safeties, we have Woodson at the free, and we have Burnett at the strong safety. Uh, these guys are really effective. Uh, but I like to switch uh, their positions. So that's the defensive depth chart uh, for the Green Bay Packers. Let's go ahead and show you our defensive audibles. Now, defense is all about making uh, – let me just – let me just go to the plays first, and then I'll talk about them. Okay, so first, first, you're the 3-4 over. We have got to have the outside linebacker fire th uh, two in our audibles at all times. That's one of the best plays in the game, guys. Pound for pound, by far one of the best plays. 3-4 uh, under. Uh, one of my favorite plays uh, for uh, short yard situations. Um, kind of just... Any real situation, I'll go to this. This MLB Crossfire 3, uh, by far one of the best plays in the game as well. 3-4 um, is very under, uh, under, underestimated also, guys. I just want to touch on that. Now, uh, this next audible, I'm trying to remember the plays. It's been a while since I've ran the 3-4, to be honest. Oh, that's right. Two deep, middle linebacker spy, uh, by far, pound for pound. Or not two deep, but Sam Mike to Sting. Uh, you want to make that your right R1 audible. Uh, so let's go to 3-4 and Let's make that our R1 audible. Uh, the reason is because it's your right run stopper. It's also really your anytime run stopper, but uh, specifically to the right side of the field. Now, uh, your shutdown run defense for second or third and short, two deep middle linebacker spy, this is a very effective play. And then the last audible is the uh, cross three fire. Now the Sam Mike 2 Sting, you can replace that with a Sam Mike 3 Seam. It depends on what type of defense you want to play. Do you want to play a cover 3? Do you want to play a cover 2 style? Uh, just depending on that is why, uh, what you'll want to run with there. So as far as that goes, I like the Sam Mike 2 Sting uh, simply because I have the flat zones there. Uh, so that's just me. I don't really use anything but Sting Pinch. But for these situational play calls, that's why I like to have these plays in my audibles. Okay, let's go over the... The main play, the main portion, we've all seen setups. If you guys, I'm going to actually link you to part one. If you guys have seen, I mean, by now we've gone over this 3-4 over stink pinch zone to death. You know all the setups. You know all the adjustments. Let's talk about problem plays in Madden 13. Let's talk about streaks to the tight end. You know, you got your guys, you got your guys running streaks to the tight end, and they're running fades to the slot receiver. Or not the slot receiver. The outside receiver, they got a drag here. And they have that uh, curl flat concept to the right side of the field. It's one of the better plays in the game here. Because you have middle seam to watch out for. You have the man-to-man uh, -man coverage on that fade route to watch out for. You have uh, a drag that beats every zone in the game. And you have a curl flat out route. So let's just watch the Sting Pint stock. And see how it defends it. You see how the out route is kind of there, but it's kind of covered. It's a scary throw to make. And if your opponent makes this throw, 
I will give it to him 100% of the time and I will reset and start all over. But again, all we're doing here is based on press covering. Now let's see how we can stop this type of an attack. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm always going to set up a blitz. So I'm going to bring pressure off the left side of the field. And now my blitz is set up. I'm done. Now I can make adjustments on my players. Now we have a fade on the left side of the field. So I'm going to put a yellow there for that. Okay, we have a tight end streak. I can user cover that. And we have a drag route coming over the other side of the field. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put your boy Eric Walden in a spy. And that shouldn't affect the blitz any. And then I'm going to take AJ Hawk here, put him in a deep blue here. And now I know that I have this out route to the right side of the field that Burnett should cover pretty well. And then I have a streak attack to Finley that... Uh, Bishop and AJ Hawk will be able to cover uh, fairly well here. So let's set this play up. One other adjustment here so we have a curl flat. So there we go. And you see pressure coming in, and that's the only thing there is that drag, and it's late. And if the pressure comes in correctly, uh, that shouldn't be there uh, because, like I said, the pressure should come in so fast. Maybe if we spy Matthews here. But. The pressure should come in so fast that there's just no time to to get the ball thrown because the window of opportunity is gone. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. But here you see, I can't throw that drag. And if I do, it's a one-yard gain at best. I have pressure coming at me. I have no time to make a read. My out routes are covered. Everything's covered. So that's a problem playing Madden 13 now that we got it covered. Okay? So... Let's talk about, you know, basics of defense, how to fill your opponent out, something, some things you can do to start off the game. One thing I like to do to start off the game is I will come up and I will run this play, and I'm just going to run it stock. But all I do differently is, if you guys remember the base setups, we crash line up, uh, shift them left for left side pressure, crash line down, shift them right for uh, right side pressure. Now we want to bring A-gap pressure, but we want to bring it from the same look. So we're just going to shift the line left. No adjustments on the line. Just shift them left, and you'll see here we're going to get A-gap pressure here from A.J. Hawk. And then just, you know, this is a play to kind of establish quick pressure, and you're going to have to get rid of the ball quick. Another thing I can do is I can probably, I haven't actually labbed this yet, but you should be able to shift your line to the right, and you should still get A-gap pressure from the middle linebacker in here. It's actually the B-gap, but, he's, you know, it's still coming pretty quick, uh, and it's unslide protectable. They can't do anything about it, so the pressure's going to come in. So at the start of each game, just throw that at them, and then once you start kind of getting them pass happy in the pocket, spring the coverage D on them. Uh, the coverage setup, and let your block sheds do your magic, and now all of a sudden there's nowhere to throw the ball, and eventually Colin Matthews, Nick Perry, uh, they're going to get in, and then once they start figuring you're going to run coverage, then you spring them with a blitz you know is going to be pretty effective, and you're going to have good coverage out of, and... There's nowhere to go. They 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 miss their first read. They're sacked. That's why I love to bring pressure versus play kind of coverage style. Only blitz two guys. Uh, pressure, I think, in my opinion, always the way to go uh, in a pressure situation. And there you see we bring it off the right, just multiple ways. If you guys don't know these setups, check out the description. There'll be a link to the video uh, where I discuss all of these setups. This is mainly just a depth chart and a breakdown of the defense overall and how to scheme with it. Uh, again, your blitz audible down here is stink pinch, so you can do it for a man in zone. Your uh, man audible up is two men under. You can do a ton of stuff with this play. Uh, one of the most common things that I've seen this year is crash line down, shift them. Uh, let me reset that. You, cr If you're shifting them to the right, again, you always crash down. If you shift them to the left, you always crash them up. Crash them down, shift them right. Spy Raji. Reblitz Walden. Put Williams here in a, in a yellow zone. Put uh, Hayward in a yellow zone. And man up the two safeties on that, those players. And then you're going to use it in the middle of the linebacker at the middle of the field. And this is one of the toughest coverages to play against in the game. Uh, because there really isn't... Everything people want to do in this game is really not there. And it's a block shed type of situation in terms of pass rushing. But it's, it's still one of the most effective coverages to run in the game. Uh, you hear, here we have uh, stock purples here in this cover too. What a lot of people don't expect is man coverage 
uh, with zones from the linebackers. So we're going to man up the outside guys on the inside receivers here. And again, you crash your line, you do the same type of uh, pressure setup, and, and you can put Roger here in a deep blue if you want. And maybe user Hawk and watch out for these left side seams. And you see it's pretty good coverage. Uh, there's really, I mean, and it's really confusing. So it's going to be tough to crack the code here with what we're doing if you mix these plays in. Um, and then if you want to just throw a basic cover three with, you know, stock stuff, uh, you can always just do that as well. I would recommend putting Matthews in some type of a zone. I would recommend having him blitz unless you're bringing him pressure from this type of a shell. And uh, we already have dis uh, discussed how to do that. But I would recommend making it a cover four and maybe potentially putting Hawk even in deep blue, making it a cover five and really forcing them to read the defense, read the field. Uh, these these are all sorts of different types of coverages we can throw. And if they're a pass-happy team, they're going to be in trouble, I guarantee it. So that's the basics of the 3-4 over. Let's talk about the OLB fire from the 3-4 over, another audible we run it the same way we run the stink pinch edge pressures. We already know this. Just remember you have these yellows on the outside here. So what I would do is I would move these deep blues down like so so that they play a little better. And then I would re-yellow Bishop so that he watches out for the streak. And now it's a tough throw uh, and really just going to have to make a play there. And you're bringing pressure. They're not going to have a ton of time. Uh, so... That's why we use that play. That's other also a, a quick uh, or an audible that we can go to if we need to stop the out routes or the Dino routes or whatever. Middle linebacker crossfire three real quick. We'll go over this. This play is an absolute monster if they're running the ball from a neutral look. So let me just give you guys a, a uh, kind of a standpoint here. This would be considered a neutral look. You see we have two guys to the right, two guys to the left. We don't really know where they could go. They could go both ways. So if I run the ball like this, the MLB crossfire three is going to really lock that down. There's really not going to be a whole lot of areas they can go to. So that's where we're using that play. That's really the only area we use that play. Cross three fire is the main pass defense. If they have cracked the code of our other pass defenses, all we're going to do is we're going to shade or uh, we're going to take Hawk, put him in a deep blue, and we're going to shade the coverage out like this, and we're going to move Woodson over like this. And uh, what's going to happen here? This is going to be one of the toughest coverages to break anything deep on, and it's going to be really tough to get like tight end seams aren't really there uh, because the coverage is the way the yellow zones are dropping. So, it's a play that is difficult to defend against, uh, to say the least. Let me see if I can get this blue to play where I want to. Uh, let's see. Yeah, what's over here like this? But you put, uh, basically you're using A.J. Hawk off the left side seams uh, and simulate that I put him in a deep blue. But he's just going to be coming here, and you see it's a quick block shed kind of a situation, similar to Mike Will Cross from the 4-3 under. Now, Sam Mike 2 seeing the way you're going to run this play is you're going to go ahead and crash the line to the right, shift them to the left here, and you should bring pressure off the right side if I'm correct. And I'm not correct, of course. I said that wrong. I'm sorry, guys. If you want to bring pressure off the right side, you're going to crash the line up, you're going to shift them to the left here, and you'll see now pressure should come off the right side. For some reason it did. Oh, what? Let's see what I did wrong. Maybe you're just supposed to shift the line to the left. That's what it was. No, it wasn't what it was. Huh. Can't seem to remember my setup for this because I was laughing it and had it and I guess I lost it. But we all know what we can do with this play. Um, one of the best, one of the best run stoppers. If you want a run stopper, just call the play stock. If you want to set up a blitz, there it was. Uh, if you want to set up a blitz from this, all you're going to do is baseline press coverage, crash line up, shift them to the left here, reblitz pick it, move Raji over a step, reblitz Walden, and now you should get a right B gap pressure from that linebacker. And uh, that will complement the other pressures nicely. 
Um, and then the last play, the two deep MLB spy. All you're going to do is you're going to call this play against a running set, and they won't be able to run on it. If they're in a passing set, you're kind of not going to be able to do anything. It's not a great pass coverage, but it is an all-out run defense. So that's all I got for you guys today. This has been this week's defensive scheme. Uh, breakdown. I'm also going to put all the other videos where I really break down setups and stuff like that down, and I'm going to put that in the description and maybe in a link below. So do feel free to check those out. Also, guys, I'm glad to be back and uh, want to hear from you guys in the comment section. If you guys are new to the channel, go ahead and check us out. Subscribe if you like what you see. If you're not new to the channel and you are a follower, go ahead and hit that like button. Make sure you show that your channel some support here. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Hopefully you guys appreciate it. Glad to be back and see you next time. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.